16. It's not far, I promise. Claire was 18 when the peace deal was signed, ending decades of war in Northern Ireland. Now she's part of a new generation trying to redefine politics here. Hi there, sorry to bother you. We're coming from the SDLP. With even younger colleagues, she wants to persuade people that there's more than tribal sectarian views. Until we trickle down from the big moment handshakes into actually, you know, giving that real effect, bringing down the peace walls, integrating education, integrating housing, um, allowing, figuring out how we can tolerate each other's cultures and how we can embrace each other's cultures, um, then we won't, we won't have sort of finished that phase of, of peace processing. The so-called Good Friday Agreement, which ended the war, turns 20 next year. The power-sharing agreement it led to has had problems, not least with the short-term crisis that led to these elections. But look around and you can see a variety of political parties emerging to challenge the status quo. Two experts in conflict resolution, they suggest a generational shift, inconceivable in the past. Younger people are more sophisticated about how they see themselves and the identities that they hold. And this is starting to get reflected in uh, politics and the parties that they vote for and the demands that they're making of political parties. And yet, while there are now genuine discussions about things like gay marriage, the relics of sectarianism still stand. These gates divide Irish nationalists and pro-British loyalist communities. In a sense, then, the tension remains between the politics of the past and a growing popular desire to move forward. People who were born when the Good Friday Agreement was signed are now old enough to vote. And while there are still plenty of physical reminders of the divide here, there is also evidence of the traditional sectarian parties being forced out of their positions because of public mood for change. What it all does is lend very much to the idea that it takes at least a generation and probably two to turn a post-conflict society into a functioning democracy. The politics of identity, whose side you are on, which define the conflict here, is already being replaced by new issues, notably around Brexit. But at least that is about the future. Nobody thinks there is any going back to violence. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, Belfast.